Next, we have the person with the screen name, AJ Ruff at Indiana, who should be able to unmute and state their name. Yeah, this is Andy Ruff. Um, I think you know, everybody knows how I feel about the process and about the policy both. Uh, and so at this point, I just want to say this amendment uh, at least begins to take into consideration um, in a substantive way some of the concerns of uh, residents uh, who have explained very well and over and over and over again uh, why this is a dangerous experiment and it's a risk that can't just be uh, turned loose in a free for all. Uh, so uh, this represents, um, as people use the term guardrails uh, on this experiment. And uh, so uh, please, please support this amendment. Um, on the affordability issues of the last few speakers, uh, as I've listened to them, you know, care, listen to Carrie, listen to Carrie Thompson, right? She's very knowledgeable and experienced on the affordability issues. John Lawrence on, on made a great comment on sustainability. I know that he's exactly right. I raised my kids in a very modest house. I had one bathroom for my first child in the house. We had one bathroom um, in uh, a core neighborhood and kids, it was still the most popular place for all the kids to gather because from my house, they could go to Bryant Park, they could ride their bikes to campus and run amok in the IMU, in the Memorial Union. It was the place the kids liked to go. They came from the suburbs, which is where uh, we would probably have been if we hadn't been able to find a modest house, priced, reasonable priced house in, the, in a core neighborhood. Um, Andrew Gunther's arguments, you know, he made some interesting points, Mr. Gunther, a minute ago, but it serves to me to simply illustrate why we shouldn't even be here at all, right? That the solution to, to Mr. Gunther's points and in, in questions is that we, sh that we should not even be here. Uh, so uh, please vote yes on this. And um, I appreciate you taking time to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Ruff. Who do we have next, Ms. Lacey? Next, we have the person with the screen name R-A-C-H-N-E-E-I at Indiana, who should be able to unmute and state their full name. Yes, thank you. My name is Rob Schneider. I live in Elm Heights. I don't want to repeat what has been said and what even I have said, but really, it's really, it's really unavoidable in a sense. I'd like to speak for the amendment, and I hope to keep my remarks only to that, but just, just to suggest that throughout this whole discussion on the three nights or more, we've had imponderables, we've had uh, connections and arguments about accessibility, affordability, and diversity as being either served plexus, and there have been very good arguments on either side. The fact is, we do not know. We do not know. And so this, perforce, is an experiment. What defines an experiment? An experiment is limited. One of the nature, one of the ways in which you limit something is by you limit it, limiting it numerically. And so I support the idea of a numerical limitation. I'd like to address Councilman Volan's really expert PowerPoint, kudos, that was remarkable <laughs> and, and very convincing. Uh, it was partial, it was restricted to one area of the city, it was uh, from a year which was highly problematic, but why not reverse the conclusions? If there isn't great pressure for flexes, for these sorts of conversions, why not just say, okay, half a cap? Why not impose that sort of interpretation upon that sort of empirical data? And we can move forward with a meaningful compromise, which after which uh, we could see that, because again, we just don't know. And it really, I guess, kind of perturbs me that people are willing to make such assertions with such a degree of confidence when it has to do with imponderables about the future. Haven't we learned enough that with all our expertise, with all our technical capacity, we don't know what is going to happen. And that sounds very existential, but it has policy implications. And it seems to me that we ought to have a certain humility with regards to the kinds of assertions and guarantees that we marshal about things which cannot be changed when we, uh, when we make sort of policy decisions and we make our claims about things where 
there, where it's characterized by uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Gail Shriver Weaver, who should be able to unmute. Uh, first, I'd like to ask Ms. Lacey if uh, she read my comments in the chat earlier. Uh, in the no, none of the comments in the chat have been read yet. They, they will be. I was able to join the meeting, so I wanted to go ahead and just speak personally. Um, my name is Gail Weaver, and I respectfully ask you to vote in favor of Amendment 3. Uh, this amendment provides some very reasonable guidelines that will not pose an undue burden either on those who will be constructing duplexes or on those who may be converting existing properties to duplexes. My husband, Dave, and I are sorry that the council did not pass Amendment 1 on Tuesday. We were hopeful that instead of sweeping zoning changes, the city council would take the opportunity to explore other solutions that would be good for Bloomington and that could serve as a model for other university towns facing similar housing pressures. Um, however, I do feel that lot, we, in a sense, we've lost that opportunity to become a model for other cities. Nevertheless, with the passage of the zoning change by the council, Amendment 2, we do feel that the issues addressed in Amendment 3 will help mitigate the concerns of citizens like us. We support Amendment 3 and urge you to do the same. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Steve Akers, who should be able to unmute. Hi, I'm Steve Akers, and I live in the Park Ridge neighborhood. Uh, I would, I, I want to chime in and say that I support Amendment 3 as a guardrail on the Plex proposal. Uh, this process really has divided many in our city, and a lot of people are hurting right now, and it's divided some of you on the council, but you know, democracy can, but we move on and we look for solutions. So I appreciate your persistence. If this is an experiment, then let's manage it that way with numbers. And that's what I think Amendment 3 does. I believe, in my opinion, I, and this is my opinion, I believe that the duplexes will add to the high price rental market in Bloomington. So a cap and having to wait and institute guardrails is just fine with me for developers that may come in. I hope I'm wrong with that. I, I, I would love to see owner occupied, I'm gonna live here and I'm gonna open the other side to someone else. That, that exists in Hammond, Indiana where my son lives and it works. So I'm, I wanna say I'm not anti-plex. It is a tool in the toolbox as President Jim Sims says. But please be aware that high housing costs, inflated costs is not unique to Bloomington. It is all over right now. And it's a really, it's a serious, serious problem for those who are trying to become homeowners. And I feel for them. I wanna thank President Jim Sims, Scott Robinson and staff for investing some time today with Susan and Dave. I think that's great. I hope it pays off. I appreciate your persistence. Uh, and really, uh, finally, I, I do want to say one thing uh, to be real. It really comes down to us as homeowners when some of us as a baby boomers decide to sell our house. What are we, gonna, what are we going to do when we sell our house and we get into a, a bidding war and end up with thirty or forty or $50,000 over our selling price? Who do, we, who, who do we want to give the opportunity to? Let's not be stingy and money hungry. It really comes down to us that sell our homes. So think about that. And uh, thank you again for your, for your work on this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Akers. The next group is Amir Biet -Vasha uh, Vashahi, Betty Rose Nagel, Rachel Fleischman, C. Trusinka, and Kathleen Myers. And Amir should be able to unmute and state um, their name for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Amir Bhavashahi. I'm a lifelong Bloomington resident and homeowner. Um, I'll keep my comments pretty short. My preference would have been to support Plexus by right, um, but as it stands, I oppose Amendment 3 
that arbitrarily limits a much needed housing option. I haven't heard any data or evidence to support the limits in Amendment 3, so I can only conclude they've been arbitrarily determined as a way to slow down potential development. Uh, Wilmington badly needs more housing options, in particular dense housing, and I hope we can take this tiny step forward and continue to allow more housing development in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Betty Rose Nagel, who should be able to unmute. Good evening. Uh, I had made a written comment in the chat that hasn't been read, so I will just go ahead and read it. I support Amendment 3. It adds teeth to the virtually toothless Amendment 2. I'll also go on and say that if I believed that in the core neighborhoods, someone would buy a duplex or, or build a duplex, duplex a, a single family home, whatever they did to get it into a duplex. If they acquired it, they lived in half of it, they rented the other half uh, to pay their mortgage or perhaps use the other half for family members, that would be fabulous. I just simply do not believe with market pressures that that's not going to happen anywhere close to the university. I really wish it were, but it would need some kind of regulation, some kind of subsidy. Um, and I don't get any kind of feeling that in some ways that that's legally possible or that there is any interest in doing that. Um, I read a letter in the HT from someone who had just recently moved here from Chicago, didn't know anything really about the situation down here and didn't understand what all the hoo-ha was about duplexing and triplexing because she, I believe it was a she, said that in Chicago it was a perfectly common thing for people to buy what they call a two flat and a three flat and live in the one and rent the other or um, live in one part and have another part of the family live in the other part. So um, in different cities, in the country and different parts of different cities with different circumstances, a duplex would work fabulously well. I'm sure in other parts of the city it would. I am sure in my own neighborhood that it would if it were regulated. Uh, ADUs can be owner occupied, have to be owner occupied, or if not occupied by the owner, the owner would be in the main residence. So that does, um, uh, had the same effect, I guess, of what the letter writer described as what is common practice with duplexes. So I, I, I don't, it is very, very frustrating to keep saying over and over again that nothing built close to the university will be affordable and so, unless very specific um, regulations are put in place. Uh, there's no evidence that that has happened. There is no evidence that they'll happen. Um, insanity is to keep doing the same thing and to expect different results. Thank you for your attention. I will repeat that I am in favor of Amendment 3. I very much appreciate the efforts of council members Sandberg and Rollo in this regard. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, if I can say before we get um, to the next speaker, um, anyone who wishes to speak publicly on Amendment 4 of Ordinance 21-23, I'm sorry, I think that's Amendment 3 um, of Ordinance 21-23, please indicate by using the raised hand function in Zoom or sending our meeting host a note on chat. And we'd appreciate the courtesy of letting us know if there's more than one person on any single device during public speaking. Um, public comments will be limited to three minutes. Uh, thank you so much for your cooperation. Ms. Lacey. The next speaker is Rachel Fleischman, who should be able to unmute. Hello, thank you for hearing my comment. Um, last night's decision, in my opinion, was a, a small, a very small step in the right direction. Let's remember the problem at hand. We have a major housing shortage in Bloomington. And the addition of duplexes is a small step. The addition of duplexes is, is, um, 
conditionally is a small step towards solving this problem. I'd like to see much more than this. Um, so I urge you to vote no to amendment three. My concern is that it will slow down this process of getting the housing we desperately need. And I also like you to think about um, what kind of do we want to be? We want to be a community that's welcoming, that's affordable, that's a comfortable place for all different types of people to live. Um, and I know this from people I know and personal experiences that duplexes serve a very wide variety of people who need to buy or rent housing that's affordable in this town. Um, so this is, like I said, this is a small step in the right direction. I feel like it's a um, amendment two was a, a reasonable compromise. And I think we all agree on the goals. It's pretty clear to me that the restrictions being put on um, in amendment three are really going to slow down our process towards meeting the goal. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the person with the screen name C. Trusinka. You should be able to unmute and state their full name for the record. Hi, my name is Charles Trusinka. I, I teach at IU and live in Helm Heights. I support Amendment 3 primarily because there's little evidence either way on single family housing. I, 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 I'm a researcher. I spent some time looking for that evidence today. And what I found were complaints by law professors who argue that there is no evidence. I posted a couple of studies on the HT today for those of you who might be interested. Um, of course, there are opinions by reporters who, who you know, conjuct fact, conjecture facts, make claims about redline, writing. There are plenty of papers uh, by government agencies. There are white papers by advocates. This is not evidence. These are just opinions. Uh, but frankly, we literally do not know the effect of weakening or eliminating single family spelling. This means that the strong opinions that people have, including my own, are based on nothing more than guesses about the future. When you're in this kind of position, where you literally have no evidence on this, on this stuff, it is, it is intelligent and safe to move ahead slowly, and that's why I support Amendment 3. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments. Next we, have, next, we have Kathleen Myers, who should be able to unmute. Thank you very much, and thank you for your patience in trying to get me um, unmuted and able to talk tonight. Um, uh, I first want to just uh, thank uh, Councilman Jim Sims, who has helped us help ensure that we've had this opportunity to continue this discussion at great length. Uh, it's a very valuable part of the, the city process. As we all know, on Wednesday night, a handful of city council members voted for plexus in all of Bloomington. Regardless of neighborhood differences and demonstrate a free market for this type of housing does not work in university towns. Other cities that are homes to Big Ten schools, such as UW-Madison and Penn State, have carried out extensive local studies that take into account the character of different neighborhoods and their proximity to the university and the high demand for student rentals. These cities are working to create affordable housing and respect for neighborhoods. Their zoning changes have not been done top down. I realize that it is too late to revisit the removal of duplexes from a citywide new zoning ordinance, but I now ask you to recall how there was a ratio of at least four to one citizens opposing duplexes and it passed anyway. So now I ask you to listen again and to please adapt amendment three Conditional use is not enough to mitigate the number of absentee landlords that will no doubt encroach on available current home ownership. And I just insert here quickly, uh, I have rent my old house across the street. I keep it under market value. I put it on Craigslist two week, three weeks ago. In two weeks, I had three cash offers from out of town developers on that house. I've never in 20 years of renting it had anybody call me offering to buy it. Please vote for Amendment 3 to help mitigate the damage to neighborhoods that have fought hard over decades to maintain a diverse, balanced population and set of housing options. 
add some guardrails like these caps and buffers offered in Amendment 3 to create controls for the citywide experiment and deregulation and free market. And as Carrie Thompson said, please consider passing the affordability amendment that will be presented next to help ensure that the best outcome for this new zoning policy does include affordability and not just free market developers. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Myers. What do we have next? Ms. Next, we have Sarah Copper, who should be able to unmute. Hi, my name is Sarah Copper and I oppose Amendment 3. We are adding duplexes to our city's housing toolbox to create more housing and more housing options. So let's add more housing. I am concerned that a buffer allows neighbors to impact the property rights of those near them. If someone adds a duplex, then they are taking that right away from those near them. That doesn't seem fair or equitable and I think it is likely to have the unintended effect of causing folks to rush to be the first. I wish we were adding plexes by right, but I understand the need to compromise by making them conditional. Let's not create even more barriers to this housing option. Thank you for your time, and I hope you'll vote no. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Sarah. The next group is Sarah Mitchell, iPad 67, Eric. Diane Jung, Matthew Kloss, beginning with Sarah Mitchell, who should be able to unmute. Hello, yes, uh, my name's Sarah Mitchell. I live in Elm um, Heights. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I express my very deep concern about the particular nature of our city and the fact that we have many, many uh, students who live in this town. And I'm going to share a story just quickly. Uh, in 2013, my daughter was a renter in, uh, she was a student at IU and she was an undergraduate. She was renting a shared house. Um, she and her friends had erroneously signed two leases and they needed to sublet. They found a family who would have been paying through section eight. The rental agents responded as follows, and I'm quoting from the email my daughter has just sent me. Quote, the realtor wrote, the landlord will not work with section eight. It is way too restrictive and they won't even come close to paying the rent we need. This is the attitude that we're dealing with here. The landlords, the developers are out to make a profit from students. I would love to think that we are going to meet goals of affordability and more diversity by introducing more duplexes. I just don't believe it's going to happen. I think we already know what the answer is going to be because it's already going on. And I, 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 I really feel strongly that we do not need to be characterized as racists or anti-diversity or anti-affordability. We've seen what happens to neighborhoods and that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, next we have the person with the screen name iPad67 who should be able to unmute and state their name for the record. Thank you. Um, my name is Jenny Stevens. I live in the near west side neighborhood and I support Amendment 3. Let's take this slowly and see where the market forces take us before we end up somewhere none of us wants to be and find out it's too late to change course. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the, the person with the screen name, Eric, who should be able to unmute and state their full name. Thank you. My name is Eric Ost and I request that you vote to adopt Amendment 3. I would like to thank council members Sandberg and Rollo for sponsoring this carefully considered amendment. And I also want to thank council president Sims for his work on this amendment. And I appreciate his collaborative efforts to help build consensus. This amendment allows us to implement sensible, reasonable and practicable conditions that will allow our community to progressively and incrementally move forward and successfully create the types of housing we need. The conditional parameters specified in Amendment 3 will assist with the achievement of common goals and they facilitate a process by which our community can monitor and measure the changes that occur. 
I sincerely request that you vote to adopt Amendment 3. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Next, we have Diane Zhang, who should be able to unmute. Hello, uh, I'm Diane Jung, and I've lived in various situations just about everywhere in and around Bloomington, but I'm currently in Bryan Park. And I am grateful for Amendment 3, and I hope it will be supported. But I also express my disappointment of the city council vote to solve the problem of unaffordable homes in Bloomington was something that just seems so far away from a real solution. Unaffordable homes is a national and worldwide problem, but I really want to have hope and believe that we can do better than this. This amendment at least could possibly help to limit and slow down the damages from greedy investors. And I'd also like to hope there may be fewer lost opportunities for people, all kinds of people, who should be able to have a real home of their own. I hope we will find a way to come together to find a real solution and hopefully learn from others a vision and goodwill for all. We're all very concerned about unaffordable homes and this should be uniting us, not dividing us. It could, be, have, it could have become a visionary exploration and opportunity to find our way to affordable homes. Um, and I really appreciated Steve Aker's comment about what will the baby boomers do when it comes time to sell our houses? And I also appreciate and feel the same as Betty Rose regarding duplexes. Thank you. Thank you for your comments this evening. What do we have next, Ms. Lacey? Next, we have Matthew Kloss, who should be able to unmute. Good evening. Nice to see you all again. Um, I want to say thanks again. Uh, you all are doing a great service here, your patience and uh, willingness to listen to all of us. Very much appreciated. Um, I missed the beginning of the meeting because I was at the McDowell Gardens uh, Neighborhood Association meeting. Um, so I wanted to uh, kind of make a point about that. Um, I'm hearing a lot of concerns about students moving into some of the historic neighborhoods. And um, some of my neighbors are expressing concerns about things like needles in our neighborhoods. Um, their children not being able to play in their yards because of the kinds of people who live around us or are around us sometimes. Um, personally, I don't have any experience with that, but I think that's an interesting perspective. So when we're talking about duplexes and density of housing, um, I can appreciate that people in the historic neighborhoods have concerns about um, noisy neighbors moving in. Um, some of us have, um, again, not my personal experience, but some of us have some other issues that uh, maybe are slightly more challenging to deal with. Um, and I, I wanted to echo uh, Steve Aker's um, comment. Uh, I think that's a, a really good point that he made. Um, the, the people who are um, thinking about selling their houses, uh, they're the ones who kind of get to make the decisions about who their neighbors or who their neighbor's neighbors will be. Um, I think that's important to remember. And uh, I want to thank Kathleen Myers for sharing her experience um, with this sort of thing. Um, it is interesting to hear that uh, developers are reaching out to people posting rental ads to buy their houses. That's, that's surprising. But as far as Amendment 3 goes, um, not in favor. Uh, so I just want to express, um, express that. And I think by now you're probably all aware of my stance on darn good soup. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Barry Clapper, who should be able to unmute. Hi, good evening. I'm Barry Clapper. I live in Elm Heights neighborhood, and I wanted just to speak briefly tonight to register my support for this amendment. Uh, I want to thank uh, Council um, Councilwoman uh, Sandberg and Councilman uh, Vol Volin, um, as well as Councilman Sims, and um, the planning staff for working together to craft a uh, a provision is measured and reasonable and, uh, and prudent at this point. So thank you all for, for um, your work on this. Um, and I just wanted to say that I hope that um, as we move through this process, uh, that we uh, begin to see an, another way forward, that this is not the end of this discussion, but rather um, 
of the beginning uh, and that we can work hopefully as a community and build consensus around developing walkable neighborhoods um, that are polycentric, that we're not completely focused on the downtown, that we make a lot of other areas of, down, of our, our already existing uh, city, uh, we bring the attributes that we like so much about the walkability of the downtown to other areas. And it's completely possible to do. And, um, and so uh, I'm really hopeful that uh, this process can continue forward and we can implement a lot of the findings from, uh, from the housing study that came out this summer. I think there is a lot of opportunity. So um, thank you again. Thank you so much for your comments. What do we have next, Ms. Lacey? Russ Eva, you should. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Hang on one second. Now, now he should be able to unmute. There you go. Am I on now? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Russ Skiba. I'd like to urge the council to support Amendment 3 for the following reasons. It is dangerous to deny the truth. We've learned that through hard experience the last four years. We were told that chloroquine was an effective treatment for the coronavirus. False claims about the quote, China virus led to the outbreak of hatred and violence against the Asian American community that's still continuing. And the failure to wear masks or become vaccinated led to super spreader events that killed thousands of Americans. It is dangerous to deny the truth. Last night, I summarized two weeks of testimony from scores of your constituents who have presented you with abundant testimony about the truths that have been for the most part discounted or ignored by the majority of you. You have received extensive data from experts, an ex-mayor, former council members, architects and city planners and university professors, but just as importantly, you've received almost unanimous testimony from your own smart and observant constituents about the negative effects they expect to see in Bloomington if sufficient guardrails are not placed around the upzoning. These are not NIMBYs, they are not racists, they are not classists, and they are not, as has been charged, old retired people with nothing else to do but organize and protest. They are a broad range of talented and intelligent residents who are not stupid, as a number of them have felt the need to remind you. It is dangerous to deny the truth. If you do these things, if you put this upzoning in place without guardrails, there will be harmful effects that will fall upon your constituents who are the subjects of the citywide experiment. And yes, by the way, it is an experiment. It was in fact, Mayor Hamilton who first began calling it an experiment. I have no intention to criticize the members of this council, far from it. As one gentleman previously noted, you have an extremely difficult job and it must feel like the weight of the world is squarely on your shoulders in these decisions. But I ask you to deeply consider the negative effects that will fall upon residents, especially low income residents and residents of color, if even half of the harms predicted by your constituents come to pass and how you will feel when you realize you had the power to moderate it and you didn't. I strongly support Amendment 3 and thank Council Members Sandberg and Rollo for their leadership in introducing this amendment and President Sims for his efforts in helping to negotiate a true compromise. Those Council Members accept and appreciate the evidence presented to them by their constituents and understand how dangerous it is, dangerous it is to deny the truth. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the person with the name, screen name Vinley, who should be able to unmute and state their full name for the record. Hello, uh, my name is Wendy Brisht, and um, I am, um, Thank you for hearing us tonight. Um, I am in support of Amendment 3. I would like to, uh, with respect to Mr. Sturbaum, finish his story. Um, I was here 
during the last down zoning, and it was a down zoning, I saw my neighborhood degrade until all the families left. All, there were no more children in my block or the next block. There were a few families left on Wiley. Everybody else left. Nobody wanted to live there then. Everybody was going down to High Street because it was dangerous. I was afraid to walk at night. We had knife fights in our street. We had a drug house on the corner. I don't think anybody remembers how bad it was nor how long it took to, to recover, but it took a long time. And people came back because they trusted the zoning. Um, and I just really, I need you guys to know that it was bad and it will get bad again. And we still have, we still have evidence of it. Okay. Enough of that. Um, you know what bugs me? The people who don't listen to others' comments and haven't researched this issue, but have been fed the same talking points and keep repeating them. For those that weren't listening, any resident homeowner can duplex their own home at any time without worrying about caps. They've been able to since 2019. It's called an ADU. And the ideology and the dog whistles that are utterly disconnected with our situation here in Bloomington are just not helpful. These people making comments have not experienced the kind of student rental density that's again slowly taking over the areas near IU and eating house after house. If people don't understand our challenges here as a college town with housing demand from 30,000 students that need to educate themselves and understand how investors in rentals continue to drive our housing problems. Student density drives out residents who then need to commute. Every house gained to rental duplexes is lost to residents. I would confidently contend that our Bloomington cores are the least racist or classist places in Indiana. And I repeat the fact that owner-occupied homes in our cores are now converting to rentals 75% of the time, even those homes that are rehabbed. Most of those are rented to students. The biggest demand we have still is for single family housing and very little of that is being built. We desperately need to keep what we have. I agree the Zoom process is terrible. To me, it is illegitimate and should never have been allowed to go forward. We deserve to be heard and seen when our neighbors, neighborhoods and homes are on the line. The only problem I see with the amendment is that I understand that it would be impossible to place a cap on the number of plexes that can be placed in a single neighborhood. It's logical to assume that developers will put them in the neighborhoods that are most desirable for high priced rentals and um, that won't do the community or its needs any good, but it's still better than nothing. I think the 150 foot buffer is great. It's not enough because it does not address our existing rentals. I have two duplexes and five rental houses filled with students, 24 students all together on all three corners and the next two houses up. Excuse These are all me. Within 150 I'm sorry, you've exhausted already. your time. Yes. Sorry, okay. thank you for your comments. Thanks. Next, we have David Keppel, who should be able to unmute. Thank you, members of the council, for your very hard work and for listening to a great many citizens with diverse viewpoints. What you're trying to do is not easy, and there are many reasonable concerns here. But in order to get to the 21st century housing patterns that we need, we will need greater uh, density and greater demographic diversity. I think that the, the addition of duplexes favors that. And so basically the change that you're making is a very good one and a necessary one. I do understand the citizens who are concerned about predatory developers taking advantage of a university community. And I understand the, the, the need for, for caution here. But I have a question for those who have proposed Amendment 3 as a guardrail. And that is, if this is considered an experiment, what is the time frame of the experiment? In other words, if you cap at 15, uh, is that an experiment that will last one year? At what point? will the world not coming to an end, if you will, uh, constitute sufficient reassurance that we can move forward? I think that needs to be clear as, as you go forward and as you consider the amendment, uh, how much safety does it in fact give and, and at what point does it? Because we do need to move forward towards a, uh, a, a 21st century housing pattern. But thank you all 
thank you for the, the, the goodwill with which you've listened to so many of us. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the person with the screen name, Cynthia, who should be able to unmute and state their full name. Thank you. My name is Cynthia Brennan. I, I've been talking to friends who rent and with all of the apartments that have been built in the last five years, their rents are not going down. In fact, they've increased more than ever. And I wish there were a study that compared rents in the old core neighborhoods to the new apartment rents. That'd be really helpful. Please approve amendment three. Uh, show me the diversity in race or economics in subdivisions, which are still protected by covenants. Please help me understand why Park Ridge East was mentioned as an example for duplexes. Park Ridge East is protected by covenants. The most common point of which is that one residence is allowed per lot. It prevents an empty nester from turning their basement garage or a couple of their bedrooms into a duplex or an ADU. The small houses in our old neighborhoods don't have covenants and can be remodeled into duplexes or ADUs as is evidenced by our higher density, which is three to six times the density of most of the rest of Bloomington. I still would love to see a study that compares the rents in those old houses to the new apartments that have been built. And on my block, there are 10 renters, 12 homeowners, and it's just fine. Our old neighborhoods are welcoming and diverse, especially economically. Please check one block in one of the large lot, large house subdivisions, which are still in city limits and which are still being approved by the UDO and the planning department with no guidance for new covenants, for new areas that are um, approved. It would really be helpful if we guided sustainability in those covenants and we haven't begun to do that. I've asked several times and I'm sure you all know how to do that way better than I. If there's anything we can do to reduce inequity, please let's put our heads together. If there's any way we can encourage anti-racism, let's put our heads together. If there's any way to put this energy into homing the unhoused rather than favoring developers and old school business school, do it. Please approve amendment three. Let's see what happens first and let's all get to working together for our beloved city, for what we want, to be sustainable and equitable and welcoming rather than focusing on developers. Let's do something new and really be kind to the precious communities that we have of all kinds. Every neighborhood is completely different and it should be that way. They shouldn't all be the same, but let's not just make a huge change just to the old, sweet old neighborhoods. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Brethine. What do we have next, Ms. Lacey? Next, we have the person with the screen name, Brian DeLong, Indiana University, who should be able to unmute and state their full name. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, again, my name is Brian DeLong. Uh, this does not represent Indiana University. I just couldn't change the name once I was in here, so my apologies. I just wanna uh, state that I'm opposed to Amendment 3. I've lived in Bloomington now for uh, 11 years and have lived in three different properties across uh, the city and directly outside of the city. Uh, I think the 150 foot boundary and 15 unit cap is not a compromise. It is arbitrary and capricious. It doesn't take into account the unique circumstances that each homeowner or future homeowners may take uh, when evaluating how to manage their property. So I don't view it uh, as uh, a backstop or anything else. I would like uh, to zero in on a few instances of repetitive language that I've heard while listening these past two days. The language of Amendment 3 is somehow guardrail, uh, teeth, or protection spoken by both council members and the public. 
it, it's interesting framing, but it's premised on a false assumption that teeth guardrails and protections are non-existent beyond the amendment. In Bloomington, whether building a duplex or single family home, the builders must produce a property that is safe, sturdy, and of quality construction that we expect from homes in our communities. As populations grow via density, the city can expand services, deal with traffic, water demands, et cetera, parking permits, uh, and you know they could be implemented or changed or adapted or altered. This is how this government works. We have meetings like this to adapt to the needs of those communities as we grow and grow more sustainably uh, via uh, President, President Sims, I, I apologize. We had a technical difficulty and I inadvertently uh, muted Brian DeLong. Okay. So I would ask that yes. we give him his time back. What, what was the last thing that you heard? I'm not sure. We, last thing I heard was she apologized for inadvertently turning you off. <laughs> so just start where you feel comfortable. We'll make sure you get your okay. time. Um, so all I'm saying is, is that, look, um, you know, our communities are smart. We're filled with a lot of smart people, intelligent. The passion that I'm seeing within uh, this, um, you know, meeting is incredible. And it just shows our, our capacity to adapt as people as communities change. And we re-envision what it means to be a part of community. Uh, many people have already pointed out in terms of history that many of the assumptions of single family homes were largely built around the 1940s and 50s. Well, we don't live in that type of world anymore, whether it's environmental uh, or sustainability of growth. Uh, other language relative to destruction of communities, homes being eaten or destroyed is largely based in fear tactics. Uh, these homes can be beautiful aesthetically as well as the people that move into them. Experimentation language is odd. We don't live in a lab. Um, all that language should you should think when you evaluate it is just a kicking the can down the road in which this council will have to deal with something in the future. Um, but we're in a crisis. We don't have enough homes. Uh, home health prices have increased 20% across the board. And so if you think this is compromise, uh, what you should view it as is more of a delay tactic that fails to meet the needs of populations moving in here, uh, you name it. It, it. At most, it may be political cover, I suppose, um, but it's not anything that's going to really appease to a large population that is already opposed to this. And it ultimately fails and operates like a poison pill. Bloomington is a living organism. We collectively can adapt. We're smart people. This is not the destruction. Don't fall prey to fear tactics. It'll be fine. Amendment three should be voted down. Thank you for your comments, Mr. DeLong. Who do we have next, Ms. Lacey? <clears throat> next, we have Solomon Bogdanov, who should be able to unmute. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Solomon Bogdanov. Uh, I commented a few days ago and then several years ago when this issue was brought up and uh, it was voted down uh, based off of community input then, which uh, then is now, which has been rather one-sided. Um, so one of the topics that I studied uh, as a student at Indiana University was the power of ideology as a means for the powerful to enact their will on and over the public and against the public good. I believe the progressive voices of the city would not have continued the pattern of destroying the concrete in favor of a possible, which is predicated on an optimistic view that humans will act automatically for the best. I understand the impulse to believe that we can overcome uh, the current tribulations of our day and age by finding the, 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 the most beautiful, um, most optimistic, um, uh, predilection for what will happen in the future, but the core neighborhoods have one protection from the moneyed aristocracy of America, and destroying it in the name of a very, very nice, very pretty sounding, very optimistic view um, that presumes that for some reason, um, those with the most power, with the most money, with the most capacity, will not in fact take advantage of what's opened is something that I find difficult um, to stomach. The, con uh, con the idea of con uh, conditional use as a compromise is a pipe dream. Um, it will not have any meaningful effect other than requiring that the, the plexes are up to code. And while Proposition 3 is not truly a meaningful compromise, I, I stand behind it 
as a, at the very least a gesture of reconciliation um, between those who favor the increase in plexes and those who seek to keep the, uh, the neighborhoods as they are now. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the spouse of the person with the screen name, Vinley, who should be able to unmute and state their full name for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Peter Bogdan. Uh, about this amendment and about the whole Plex thing uh, that was decided way back against it, but now like a zombie has been resurrected from the dead there seems to be something weird, illegitimate that is going on. I ask of the members of the city council who have reassembled this Frankenstein monster, where is the money or what is the ideology that compels you to sell Bloomington down the river? Who has a gun to your back or what are you getting out of this that forces you to ignore the overwhelming desire of Bloomington residents? You seem to have forgotten your oath of office to serve the city of Bloomington, which consists of the people of Bloomington who elected you, not outsiders and insiders with their money, not the mayor, not the planners who do his bidding, but us, who live will be dramatically affected by your choices. I'm gonna remind you that when your position as a public servant is mis misused, such as appears to be doing now, as you seem to be doing now, your authority becomes illegitimate and you no longer deserve that position. You have every opportunity now to make an about use. Remember this, you're not elected to be overlords who can push your private agenda or personal ideology, but our servants who are elected to serve us, people of Bloomington. Listen to us. We've been talking to you the past few days and many days before that, and you seem to be ignoring us. Please take the opportunity to do something different. This Amendment 3 is, is an opportunity to make a change with that and to limit this plex monster. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have the person with the screen name, Steve, who should be able to unmute and state their full name for the record. Hello, uh, my name is Steve Lehman. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you. Like to be here. Fine. I live in Arden Place. I want to say thanks to Dave Rollo and Susan Tenberg for their work on Amendment 3. I know that you had a, it was a hurry up thing, and I think you did a great job with it. Uh, this amendment led, adds uh, guardrails to a poorly conceived and written housing policy. Uh, however, I would prefer that the council rolls back the entire policy conversation. I will say it again. Homeownership is the uh, long-term key to safety and security for the residents of Bloomington. I hope the city will use all resources like the things that are being offered by our federal government to help people out. Use those resources to make home ownership more accessible and affordable, whether it is single family, duplex, triplex, whatever it is, but put people in a position where they can gain equity. I heard a council member speak the other night, maybe last night, there's been a lot of meetings here lately, but I heard a council member speak of generational wealth. And that kind of sounds like a, it's kind of a funky term a little bit, but if you think about it, I think about somebody who spoke uh, when we were talking about the uh, housing shortage and everything a couple years ago. And there was a lady that spoke from, uh, I think it was Brian Park. And she spoke about when she and her husband were able to purchase a fixer upper, they fixed it up. They lived there for 20 years. And then when their children got into the market and things like that, 
they they chose teaching okay and teaching is a lot of people know is not a great pain alignment i want you to finish your statement um but i just want to remind you that we're uh, having comments on amendment three yes okay thank you uh, well, very much I'm speaking about amendment three. okay thank you uh, yes thank you um council member sims but i'm just saying that Amendment three is good, but we need better and we need the council to do better. Uh, so I'm going to leave that other stuff out. I wish I could have got it in there. Uh, I will say to Barry Clapper, Barry Clapper said that she hopes this is the beginning, not the end. I agree 100%. We got a lot of work to do. I would say to Cynthia, uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about covenants and covenants have nothing to do with this. Um, it, it, it's way too expensive for neighborhood associations to uh, hire lawyers and fight the city on things like zoning. So um, that's it for me for tonight. And I just hope that uh, the city council will reconsider a lot of the things that have been decided recently and that we can move forward with a great housing policy here in Bloomington that will help people out. Thank you so much you. for your comments. Thank you. Next, we have um, a person with a screen name, Patrick, who should be able to unmute and state their full name for the record. Thank you, you guys. My name is Patrick Siney. I live in Bryant Park neighborhood. Um, this is such a great community and uh, you guys are working so hard and I love my neighbors and I appreciate all your time. I. I, um, I'm the volunteer um, coordinator of the community gardens in Bryant Park. And um, I did a, I did a area in the middle of the street over, took all the weeds out and I planted flowers for the last like seven years. And every year it looks better and better. I'm just amazed at how people can do such great things for their community. And um, as a individual person and how you guys serve us all, so thank you very much. Um, housing is a big issue for, it has personally been for me for 20 years, and I think it's equally important to everybody that is my neighbor and lives in my community as Bloomington as a whole. So it's an important issue. Um, the, the street, the houses that are owned by uh, developers and re re uh, real estate people that rent to students are, um, are just icing on the cake when I moved here. They were just so beautiful and I wish I had access to them. It seems like they're just all, when it goes to a developer, they're just locked up for a lifetime out of reach. They serve a great purpose and I'm glad they're there for the students. I love the students. They're such a great part of this town. But more places like the quarters at Bloomington on Third Street are opening up and more so opening up quickly. I'm just wondering, there will be a time when there's a, I mean, the parking lots aren't full, but it's COVID. So maybe five years from now, there'll be a lot more apartments and hopefully houses can open up because it is all about owning your home and building equity. Um, it's just, I just, I think plexes have a place in that. I just hope that we um, focus, we all see issues like Walnut Street being undeveloped and houses that are locked up for generation and people can't get them or afford them. So I just hope that you guys focus on other issues that you see clearly in front of you. And this plex thing is a whole new ball of wax that well, we're taking it, so uh, I support Amendment 3, and I hope that you guys see problems in our, in our society that you also work to uh, help this housing problem along in a diverse way. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. Miss Lacey, I don't see anyone. Um, someone else may um, indicate that they want to speak publicly. But did you say you had some 
comments we sent to you. I have chat. a number of comments in the chat that I've been asked to read, and if council will bear with me, I will do that. There have been a number of chat conversations again this evening. The <clears throat> um, first is from Daryl Hale. I would like this to be read to the council. Daryl Hale, in taking its recent actions on duplexes in the core neighborhoods of Bloomington, the mayor and the city council have shown a striking disregard for the views of those who live here and have contributed their energy and their resources to help make Bloomington a great place to live. Given this lamentable decision, I can only hope council will to some small degree mitigate it by passing amendment three, which I fully and strongly support. Um, the next is from Julia Livingston. I support amendment three proposed by Susan Sandberg and Dave Rollo. The next from Ann Creelcamp. Ann Creelcamp, an owner, Green Acres, please vote yes on Amendment 3. To do so will demonstrate the integrity of what Ms. Scanlon said last Zoom, that she wouldn't expect more than 10 or 20 new duplexes per year, and that if more, they would revisit the situation. The next message is from David Lawler. My name is David Lawler and I am writing in strong support of Amendment 3. As a longtime resident of Bloomington, I'm truly appalled at how the earnest voices of the vast majority of people in this communi community have been dismissed by the very narrow majority of our council members. Are you representing the phenomenal number of people who have raised their sincere voices of concern or are you simply yielding to the whims of this city, city's administration? To that end, I would ask that the guardrails be in place to, at the very least, provide quantitative limits on this experiment by passing this amendment. I am asking that this comment be read tonight when appropriate. The next is from Carlin Grease. My name is Carlin Grease, and I wish to have my comment read aloud. I am vehemently opposed to the actions of the council this week. The majority of council members have ignored the desire of their constituents, a direct violation of the principles of democracy. Shame on you. The next from David Fisher, comment, David Fisher, comment to be read aloud. I strongly support amendment three since it brings back the mayor's proposed radius around duplexes and also allows us to conduct this experiment in a controlled way by limiting the initial speed of development. If plexes really work as well as their proponents advocate, a future, a future council can <clears throat> act easily to raise the cap. The next is from Gabrielle Price. My name is Gabrielle Price. I live in Green Acres neighborhood. I ask that this comment be read aloud. I implore the council to please vote yes on amendment three. Thank you for your time. The next is from Richard Durson. Please read this public comment for me on amendment three. My name is Richard Durson. I'm a long-term resident of Elm Heights. I strongly support this amendment as providing safeguards on the creation rate and concentration of new duplexes in core neighborhoods. The next from Martha Shedd, public comment. I am a constituent of Isabel Piedmont Smith's. I am disappointed with the seemingly unmitigated plexus. Please support this amendment for caps and buffer zones. The next from Anna Maria Mecca. My name is Anna Maria Mecca and I would like to comment my comment to be read. I grow tired of talking before my elected officials and not being heard. Therefore, I defer to you to read my comment. I urge you to vote yes on amendment three to add safeguards protecting our neighborhoods from uncontrolled development by real estate investors. Without these, what is left of affordable owner occupied home, excuse me, what, without these, what is left of affordable owner-occupied homes will disappear. Please limit the harm you are already doing by allowing duplexes in R1, R2, R3. Control your experiment. 
the next from John Krushny regarding Amendment 3. I'm John Krushny, East Side Neighborhood. I like the per year frequency limit very much, but I think the 150 foot separation could backfire and actually harm adjacent. As a homeowner, if a house next to me is plexed and I find the new noise and traffic to be intolerable, my only escape is moving. But the 150 foot rule makes it even harder for me to move because now my house cannot be plexed. This punishes me financially if I want to sell by making my house undesirable to developers who cannot flex it. And it's already made my house undesirable to potential owner occupants who might not want to move into a house next to a plex. And if I want to rent, move out but rent my house, I am not allowed to plex it even though the developer who plex the house next door is collecting double or more the rent than I can. So despite the good intentions of the 150 foot separation rule, it could backfire and harm the adjacent homeowners the most. Thank you. The next from Diana Lamp, uh, Lambton, please read aloud as, my, as a comment. We are very concerned about the change to allow duplexes to replace single family homes in Bloomington neighborhoods. We support amendment three to limit the impact of this significant change to Bloomington zoning regulations. Diana V. Lambden and Frank K. Lester. The next is from Victoria Nelson. Address My name is Victoria Nelson. Addressing tonight's proposal, Amendment 3, I want to state that I am strongly in favor of passing Amendment 3. I hope it will give some protection to Bloomington neighborhoods. I am concerned about my neighborhood, Pinestone, and very concerned about all the neighborhoods that are so vulnerable to being neg negatively impacted by the upzoning passed this week. Please read my comment aloud. Thank you. Please read this comment from Vita Stanfield. I urge the council to accept this third amendment it will provide some measure of control to an experiment in zoning that so many citizens believe to be a dangerous plan. From Daryl Stone, yes to amendment three as it is a final attempt to define roles and boundaries, all of which are essential variables in any healthy system. Restoring the 150 foot radial buffer helps to establish a minimum expectation for space to allow a reasonable, respectful buffer, buffer density design, as well as for sound activity, etc. Not to mention preventing the blocking of view and culling of established trees, etc. That said, the more cogent number within this amendment is not how many per year, it is how many per neighborhood will we allow ever. Please consider something lower than 15 per year per neighborhood as please consider something lower than 15 per year per neighborhood as even that number is a severe design change to consider without our without our city will find itself full of tall plexes all encroached around the few older small homes left lost in the shadow of investors who decide the design for us. A free market for the privilege to buy up as many single family homes they can afford in these neighborhoods will now be our version of infamous redlining. From Kelly Sachs, please read my comment. My name is Kelly Sachs. I support amendment three for the for the many good reasons already articulate, articulated by many others. If we did not live in a college town with the strong market forces as they are, I would support the addition of duplexes in our core neighborhoods as a way to incre increase close in affordable housing and avoid sprawl. But I do not believe plexes are the answer for our town. I support the idea of development at places like the old hospital and the creation of village centers. Since it seems we cannot convince the majority of council members to avoid plexes altogether in core neighborhoods, you owe it to us to proceed with the experiment very slowly with maximum 
with maximal restrictions in place at the beginning. Please support Amendment 3. Thank you. The next is Sarah Mitchell. I would like to raise the issue of what I see as the elephant in the room, IU. Could council tell me how much effort has been made? Point of order. Yes, Council Member Piedmont Smith. I'm sorry, I, I recall Sarah Mitchell already gave a comment herself. My apologies, Council Members Piedmont Smith and, and other Council Members. Uh, Council Member Piedmont Smith is correct. <clears throat> there was a comment um, when the raised hand function was being used. Moving on, um, a comment from Janet Stravropoulos. Uh, this is Janet Stravropoulos. I re reside in Bloomington. Please read the following comment. I support the passage of Amendment 3. From Rebecca Fassman, I want to express that I am against Amendment 3. We need to create more housing for more people and not be scared of people who live in apartments. Having diverse housing makes neighborhoods more appealing to some of us, myself included. I do not feel comfortable living in a neighborhood of just single family houses. That's not how I grew up. That's not what I think is valuable in a neighborhood. It is preposterous not to mention racist and classist to assert that only certain types of people can live in certain neighborhoods. And I would refer everyone to the New York Times article, the new redlining. Is deciding who lives in your neighborhood published on April 19th this year. This destruction that you were talking about is literally just providing an array of types of homes to a broad and diverse range of full humans who want to enjoy the same resources that you do. From Ann Stevenson. Hello, my name is Ann Stevenson and I'd like to thank the council for letting me comment via chat. Having read through the legislative packet provided at the city's website for tonight's special session, I am confident in saying that Amendment 3 proposed by Council Members Sandberg and Rallo will put in place guidelines and parameters on the rezoning of Bloomington's neighborhoods, which will mitigate and or prevent the damage from UD from UDO passed with only conditional use. As such, the Amendment 3 will benefit Bloomington as a whole. As a whole. Please vote yes on Amendment 3. I'd also like to say that council members who cited their silent constituents as major factors in their opposition to Amendment 1 last Tuesday night insulted and homogenized those silent con constituents in presuming that what those sent silent constituents want definitely aligns with the council members ideology. At the very least, having so many silent constituents should have been reason to pause the decision so that you could find out from them what they wanted from you as their representative. Your presumption served your ideology, not the democratic process. And I will be among those who remember this for leadership in 2023. I'm grateful that my District 2 representative did listen to her constituents and explained a thoughtful, well-considered process in coming to her decision Tuesday night. Thank you for your time. From the screen name S.E. Jones at IU.edu, I urged council members to vote yes in support of Amendment 3. I support Plexus but feel we need to take the time needed to make sure that the consequences of plexus on traffic, infrastructure, loss of green space, and perhaps positive influ 
impacts of creating more diverse neighborhoods and affordable housing. Planning supports the 15 plex limit. Please support amendment three. Thanks, Sarah Jones, um, East Wilton Court 47401. From Kathleen Sidelli. I, Kathleen Sidelli, am a longtime homeowner from Elm Heights. I strongly support the amendment being considered. From the person with the screen name Annette to the meeting host, I support Amendment 3 as a weak guardrail to slowing the inevitable degradation of core neighborhoods. The degradation comes from the pre-existing small lots and high density and older neighborhoods. I thank especially Council Members Sandberg and Rollo for their efforts to keep our neighborhoods healthy. <clears throat> from um, Alette Lindenstrauss, Please support Amendment 3. The, 50, the 150 radial buffer is essential to make sure that residents in duplexes enjoy the benefits of core neighborhoods as was stated in these meetings rather than change the core neighborhoods. Capping the number of approvals a year is also essential since it was repeatedly said that the effect of plexus wasn't exactly known but rather it is an experiment that might help with housing availability which I am very concerned about. I worry that developers will come in and housing prices will increase. The experiment should be a controlled, slower experiment in case it is deemed not to have the hoped for results. I'm sorry, Ms. Lysan, I know you have to scroll through them. Do you have an estimate about how many more you have? President Sims, I'm Ms. approximately 15, uh, approximately halfway through the scroll, but I noticed that I have 15 new messages that I've not seen yet. Okay, please proceed. I, I believe, I believe that I saw council member Rosenberger raise her hand. I was just gonna ask if it makes sense to compile those and send them to us to read in our email. Well, I think we could, but I think we've also offered them to get public comment through chat. So I think that would have been something we would have had to make clear at the beginning. I, uh, I don't disagree with you, but I don't think that's the proper thing to do right now. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Can you continue, Ms. Lacey? Yes. From the screen name, um, E-M-A-N-S-D-O-R. Please vote yes on Proposition 3 as, as a way to put a measure of restraint in place as we go forward. My experience of living in the core neighborhoods of Bloomington is that there is always a precarious balance being maintained among neighborhood concerns, homeowners and renters, student population that is transient and long-term homeowners. The proposition would put a measure in place that would prevent destruction of the ambience of Bloomington as a decent place to live and not just and not just means for landlords behave opportunistically. If the city were really concerned about making affordable housing available, there are other ways to do this. My name is David Stewart. I live in the Bryan Park neighborhood. I am hoping my statement will be read slowly and carefully, just as I would state it if I have a microphone on my computer. Please vote yes on Amendment 3. The compromise of Amendment 3 would allow the experiment of allowing plexus in, core in the core neighborhood to be carefully monitored. Amendment 3 establishes guardrails to protect existing homeowners in core neighborhoods. If the goal is truly what Matt Clarity mentioned earlier tonight, and I quote, we want to encourage small scale local development, then amendment three is an excellent scientific and quantitative method to evaluate the achievement of this goal. If however, the goal is to open up the core neighborhoods to absentee owners and unregulated and unmonitored outside development, then amendment three is an impediment. Protect neighborhoods, keep the guardrails in place, vote yes on amendment three, thank you.
from Sandra Tokarski. My name is Sandra Tokarski. I've lived in the Grandview Grand Hills neighborhood since 2017 and in Monroe County since 1975. I urge council members to vote yes on Amendment 3 as sponsored by Dave Rallo and Susan Sandberg. I am deeply distressed by the removal of zoning protections to our neighborhoods. Hopefully Amendment 3 can help slow the damages to our neighborhoods. My name is Linda Stewart. I live in the Bryan Park neighborhood. I hope you read my story. We have lost the, bat the first battle of preserving core neighborhoods. There are five council members who voted against preserving the zoning in core neighborhoods, but we are all Hoosiers and we are never daunted. I support Susan Sandberg's and Dave Rollo's compromise, Amendment 3. I believe that an experiment should be carefully monitored and quantitatively evaluated. The core neighborhoods are a gold mine for outside development developers looking for student rentals. Please, please keep the guardrails in place. Don't open the floodgates. Monitor whether rental prices go down from the current 750 per room. Examine over time with careful study whether the experiment is a success. A success for whom? Success for outside developers or success for potential and future homeowners. Your vote on Amendment 3 will reveal your true agenda. Thank you. From the screen name J.A. Klein at Indiana University, Please support Amendment 3 as it will mitigate the possible unintended adverse consequences of upzoning. The amendment will allow for evaluation of this experiment before we are in a free fall, fall, free fall from it. It is a reasonable compromise between those who oppose plexus in the core neighborhoods and those who advocate for them. From Patrick Murray, I support Amendment 3. I support Amendment 3. It is a way to monitor what the city itself calls an experiment to see how it will work out in reality. Truly affordable housing is not possible without public subsidy. Please vote for Amendment 3. Thank you. From Michael McCafferty, the forced feeding of plexus on Bloomington citizens has, been, has polarized the Democratic Party in this town like nothing before and it will have real electoral repercussions down the road. The adoption of Amendment 3 will at least show that there are council representatives who are willing to listen to the overwhelming majority of voters who have from the very beginning opposed plexes. From Margaret Key, my name is Margaret Key and I live in the near West Side neighborhood. I support Amendment 3 as a means to slow the rate of change while we build consensus and do research on the impact of affordability of ending single family zoning in college towns with their unique, uh, with their unique dem demographics and cost pressures. My name is Drew Meadows. I am in favor of these better can use amendments and ask you to vote it in. It offers better protection for neighborhoods than the one you passed last night. I live near the newish hillside in Henderson Neighborhood Center and really enjoy the restaurants and shopping now within walking distance of my house. I would like to see more of these little neighborhood centers so people like me who don't live downtown can enjoy them. You shouldn't have to live downtown to walk to the restaurants and shops. My neighborhood has gotten a lot nicer since the center opened up. 
I don't know why we can't have them all over Bloomington. That would definitely be better than overloading already dense neighborhoods near the downtown. Again, I ask you to vote yes on this amendment. My name is Barbara Moss, and I'd like to ask you to approve Amendment 3 as a way to move toward a two, true compromise with some teeth. Thanks to the sponsors, Dave Rallo and Susan Sandberg, and to President Sims for working with them cooperatively to bring this compromise forth. Thank you. From Tim Kennedy, my wife and I live on the near west side and own our home. I support Amendment 3. I have no objection to the idea of duplexes in theory, particularly ones that are owner owned, although I have a feeling that removing all limits will simply attract developers. I think it makes sense to put up guardrails and take things slowly. This is what experiment, experimentation is. It has been noted that these limits could be reconsidered in six months. The vitality of these neighborhoods is fragile. The kind of caution that Chris Sturbaum advocates makes sense and he knows. He has seen the changes Bloomington has experienced over a generation. From Constance Glenn, as a supporter of Amendment 3, I would like you to read this statement. Thanks to all for your efforts on this very difficult topic. Please take this opportunity to work with citizens of Bloomington in positive ways and harness the energy that is within our neighborhoods to find solutions to the very real problems of housing accessibility, poverty, and, in and inequity. Please do not be foolishly swayed by ideological promises that are ignoring the important realities of greed in our society and instead choose to promote an excellent life for all members of the Bloomington community. Thank you to the designers of Amendment 3 for the careful work that you have done and the engagement that you have had with the residents of our city. Please vote for Amendment 3. Connie Cook Glenn and James Glenn. <clears throat> Jack Horton, I'm a 40 year resident of Bryan Park. I strongly support Amendment 3. From Perry Hodges, no one has shown that the Plex plan will provide affordable housing. We need, we'll provide, that's what it says. Please listen to Kerry Thompson who know about affordable housing. From Bess's iPad, I strongly support Amendment 3, since the upzoning shows families of color and low income people will be shut out with rapid upzoning. It will actually be anti racist. From Derek Ritchie, this is Derek Ritchie, please read. I support Amendment 3 at the very least. I have served on the BHPC for almost a decade now. Big developers are real. We have approved to my chagrin house after house for demolition by developers at the BHPC. You have opened the you have opened up the door for more of this exploitation. Amendment three is the least we can do. From Jamie Stoll, my name is Jamie. Sh Jamie Scholl, I am in support of Amendment 3, and I can only hope that it is enough to control development and provide the safety Bloomington's core needs. It has been extremely disappointing to watch and listen to this issue and, and the disregard of many voices of different ages and stages of life representing our small city by so many on the council. Please support this amendment, although I think there are much better solutions, which I have previously mentioned during other meetings and via email. Thanks for reading my statement and the time of the council on this issue. from Karen Duffy. My name is Karen Duffy, I, and I ask that you support Amendment 3 as a reasonable and practical measure. Thanks to Council Members Sandberg and Rollo, Rollo for drafting this proposal, and to Council, Mem Council President Sims and Planning Staffer Scanlon 
for providing their input to refine it. Blessed are the peacemakers. Our community needs you more than ever. I hope all council members can support Amendment 3. Please read, support Amendment 3. Thank you, Deborah Piston Hatlin. My name is Marsha Barron and I live in Elm Heights. Given the overwhelming opposition to putting plexes in core neighborhoods as opposed to at the edges of such neighborhoods, the least council can do is pass Amendment 3. I urge the council to do so. I would like to add, responding to some points that have made by others, that contrary to what council member Piedmont Smith has said, there is no reason at all to think that those who have chosen to speak up have more time than those who, who have not. Her suggestion being that therefore council members should feel free to discount what we say. Many of us are joining in at considerable personal cost, enough so that her remarks indicating in effect that she is more interested in what she imagines to be the opinion of, opinions of those who do not speak than the actual opinions of those who do. Leave us wondering if there is any point in speaking up at all. Please do hear us, all of us who speak up. I would also urge that when people do speak, you allow video to be turned on for the speaker. That way you hear something other than a disembodied voice. I also want to comment on remarks made deriding concerns about the additional cars that duplexes will bring. The concern is not only more traffic, though that is a safety issue, especially for children and elderly pedestrians, but also the reduction of green space by having six unrelated adults living in a house rather than three. The core neighborhoods are beautiful in part because of their green spaces. These green spaces will be reduced and the beauty of the neighborhood marred by greatly widened driveways in many cases, unless an amendment is introduced to require that driveways not be widened and yards not turned into parking lots. And yes, it is typical for students to have cars, especially when they live off camp campus. Replying to council member Flaherty, let's not forget that there is the option of ADUs, a great option for someone who plans to live in the house and presumably that, re and presumably that rather than duplexes owned by someone investing from a distance, and especially duplexes owned by companies is what we want. Again, I urge you to vote in support of amendment three. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Um, I, I believe uh, I have two. Okay, uh, thank you. No, not I to rush guess. you. I, no, I understand how difficult that is for you on that end. So thank you. Okay. Um, this, is, this is from Herbert Marks, Elm Heights. Herbert Marks, Elm Heights, in the name of common sense, please support Amendment 3. There is absolutely no reason not to. From Stella Hooker Haas. Please read Stella and Mark Hooker support Amendment 3. Um, that concludes the, message, the messages that I received in chat. There are no more raised hands and I, and I did receive a message in chat um, that someone sent a, an email to the council office um, because they couldn't type it in chat. I don't, I'm not sure, but anyway, that, that email was read. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now we'll go to council comments on Amendment 3. Um, I want to thank um, our council members for their brevity and throughout this, um, and many of our public commenters. Uh, we, a part of our uh, meeting structure, that we will entertain a motion to recess um, at 11. So it is my intent to get, at least get through this amendment. Um, within that time frame, um, at least I can hope. So it is now time for um, comments from council members, final comments. I'm trying to get to the right screen so I can see everyone's hands. So I flipped them. Um, I have council member Rollo and then council member Flaherty. Mr. President, I actually had a question if, um, if, if we could do that before. Yes. Uh, it's primarily for staff, um, if staff is with us. Uh, and it was just about 
uh, some of my concerns with the 150 foot buffer. And I mean, it does create different property rights for different people, which is, I think, um, you know, one speaker noted somewhat arbitrary or capricious. And I, I have some concerns about that, but um, it's hard to know how founded they are, uh, frankly. And, and um, I'm wondering if uh, we'll track that. Uh, I guess you would probably know if, if um, someone came to inquire about uh, converting their home into a duplex and, and you looked at that and, and they, you said, no, you can't for the next year and a half or something. Um, is that something you can include in your reporting to us? Yes. Uh, should this amendment pass? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Council Member Rallo. And then Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, I would like to extend my gratitude to you for um, discussion on this amendment and, and helping to, to refine it as, as well as um, the, uh, um, the head of planning and transportation, um, Scott Robinson. Um, so what was decided on Tuesday with the defeat of Amendment 1 among a split council uh, is, a, is a change in zoning that I, I consider quite a massive change. I think it could be argued that it, it's the most massive that we've encountered in decades. Um, and it affects nearly every uh, neighborhood in Bloomington. Uh, we don't know the outcome, as has been said by many of the speakers eloquently of this experiment and what this policy will yield. Now, it might yield what Councilmember Volan has argued, that is little to no effect. Um, maybe there won't be any plexes built or many conversions. That's possible. Councilmember Allah, um, I'm yes. just wondering, are you speaking on the entire ordinance or on this amendment? I'm speaking on this amendment. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, we have historical precedents uh, for upzoning that should give us caution. Uh, we know that there are strong profit incentives for conversion of single family homes to plexus. Um, this profit incentive may, as Gene Simonian ar argued, drive housing prices up. So there are valid reasons to exercise caution as we go forward. This amendment strikes a balance. It provides a safeguard against possible, what I consider probable harm. It is a moderating approach that would uh, give us controls on this experiment. We will observe what occurs uh, as this proceeds, and we'll no doubt revisit plexus based on what we find. So support the guardrails on this experiment as we go forward, and please support this amendment, Amendment 3. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member Rosenbarger. And, and before you get started, Councilmember Rosenbarger, I just want to remind my council members we're on split screen, so I'm flipping between the two to catch um, your hands as they're raised. So if you choose to speak. Okay, Councilmember Rosenbarger. Um, thanks. I was going to ask a question, but I think I'm, I'm too many more, actually. So I'm just going to wait a minute, if that's okay. For comment? We're in final comments, unless you do have a question. Right, this is what I'm saying. I had a question, but I decided I will not ask it. And so I'll just wait if that's okay for my final comment. I'll be happy to jump in instead. <laughs> well, I'm trying to look through. So do you have a comment, uh, Council Mayor Flaherty? Please go ahead. Sure, thank you. That's what I uh, meant to say. Uh, no, I appreciate it. And appreciate um, uh, all the input from members of the public and and I know a number of, of council members over the last weeks and members of the public um, that I've met with and others. We've all sort of, I think, workshopped ideas around this. And I appreciate, um, I, I think there are, there are downsides and concerns to an amendment like this, some of which I expressed and wanted to make sure we talk through. Um, but uh, as I said the other evening, I, I, I think it's, it's clear that different demographic groups and people that are differently situated um, socioeconomically in town and other, and other characteristics have, you know, pretty strong splits in, in policy views on, on this matter. And, um, 
I think compromising uh, has a lot of value in that process. And I, and I do think where we arrived previous to this point is a meaningful compromise because it's not just conditional use, but um, again, looking only at duplexes, which is the smallest and most incremental step among missing middle housing options, which are all um, more affordable housing options, more affordable types, uh, which is why they're called out in the, in the comprehensive plan um, that we saw supporting amendment two yesterday. Um, and that, that, that's really strongly empirically proven with American community survey data and that sort of thing. So anyway, I, th I think it's a, a meaningful compromise we already were at. Um, I don't think I would have supported this amendment in its original form. Um, in particular, the uh, 150 foot buffer in perpetuity, I think was a real problem. Um, I think it's been, um, uh, some of those concerns have been mitigated uh, and appreciate the compromise and work that went into that. Um, you know, I, I think um, the idea of guardrails and teeth and protections, I, one speaker sort of alluded to this, um, which that's sort of based on the assumption that duplexes are bad and that they are undesirable within neighborhoods. And, I, and it's, this is not a view I share. Um, so I don't really agree with the premise <laughs> of, of um, and it, it makes me, it makes me sad that um, we treat different housing types so inequitably, uh, even when those are historic types that have always been in our neighborhoods, because these types of guardrails use specific standards, all these other things are not applied to single family homes. And I'm sure we'll get into that tomorrow um, with affordability too. I mean, we could limit single family homes to one bedroom max, unless they had affordability requirements. For instance, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> All this to say, uh, this was a difficult decision for me, actually. I don't think it's uh, necessarily needed. I think there are some downsides, but I think there's some positives for various reasons as well. Um, so I appreciate everybody weighing in. I appreciate the compromise, and I'll support the amendment. Thanks. Thank you, Council Council Flaherty. Um, more comments from Council. Council Member Smith. Thank you, President Sims. Uh, this, this is a really good amendment. It, it does some things that, it doesn't stop uh, the development of duplexes. It just kind of uh, puts some controls and some things that we would like to measure in order for us to, to gauge what's going on. So, um, and we can revisit it. So I think this is just a, a really great uh, in, uh, thought out uh, amendment to a controversial topic and that has uh, really frightened a lot of our constituents. And, um, you know, one of our jobs is to uh, try to make sure we speak for our constituents. And, you know, overwhelmingly, people are really nervous about this. So these are, these are some really great um, controls, some things that we can observe. I want to thank um, Council Member Sandberg and Rollo for their hard work on this. And uh, I, I will be supporting it. Um, the one thing I, I wonder about is, you know, if, if you oppose it, um, I, I, don't, I don't know why you would oppose it at this point, just because doesn't really um, stop anything, but it does give us an up to pause and, and take a look and maybe adjust it in the future. So um, thanks to everybody. Uh, lots of great public comment again. And uh, I especially wanted to thank Mr. Hill who said such nice things about how difficult this is for us all because it is. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Council Member Smith. Um, any other comments from Council? Okay, seeing uh, Council Member Rosenberger. Sorry, I'm probably on a different screen for you. No, that's Thanks okay. to no, everybody no. for this. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, you're fine. Go ahead. For this debate. Okay. Thanks to everyone again for this debate tonight. Can't wait for the next one. Um, I've actually had a hard time with this amendment because part of me definitely think we already compromised and uh, this is a little bit but um so the rhetoric of like that wasn't a compromise this is a compromise it, i mean it kind of gets difficult to trust uh 
folks. Um, you know, if we say one day something is a compromise and then the next day we say it isn't, um, what's happening? I think yesterday was a really big compromise and I, I was happy to support that. I said that many times. I think, you know, being an advocate of quadplexes up to quadplexes in neighborhoods by right and changing to only duplexes conditionally is an enormous compromise. And I, I think most people here would agree on that. Um, just some tiny points. A lot of a lot of folks comment conditional is the same as permitted. I actually think most people would disagree with that. If they were the same, we wouldn't have hours and hours of council debate and public comment. Um, they are different. And we saw that with ADUs, right? When ADUs were conditional permitted, we're seeing some ADUs pop up. So I think data show that, that you know conditional and permitted aren't aren't the same. They also of course have different access points. It's a lot harder to prep for conditional use. It's a lot more predictable for permitted. So a lot of barriers for this conditional, I think, is what we've seen in the past. The first come, first serve buffer is difficult for me. Um, you know, I talked to staff about any other ideas there and I, I don't really feel like anybody had anything. I don't think it's good. I think it does, you know, it, it bothered me with ADUs back in the day. I think it can really pit neighbors against neighbors, which is something a lot of people here say they don't want any division in the city. So I think division in the neighborhood doesn't sound great. Um, I think what some council members talked about, it could favor out of town developers instead of folks who might need to scramble to get some money or, you know, home equity loan first to convert a, their house into a duplex. I think it really is putting cash in front. It's like the thing we are afraid of speculation out of town developers. It's like, it seems to like weigh imbalanced on that side, I think. Um, so kind of creating, you know, more haves for the haves and the have nots are, are left kind of scrambling there. Um, I'm definitely okay adding amendments to tweak an ordinance if it's clear that something negative might happen. I think here the sphere has been based in data as Council Member Volan showed. No duplexes have been built in a place that is highly student oriented, which is what people are afraid of, right? Students living in duplexes in their neighborhoods and it's not happening in a very student centric area where you would think single family homes would be would be sold to people doing duplexes. So I don't know, I'm pretty, I'm up, I'm still oddly like not sure what I think. I'm like leaning no here. Um, and that's where I am, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any other comment from council members? Uh, council member Stambler, put your hand up, council member Bolin, I'm sorry. Sorry? No, was your hand up? Yours hand might have been up before mine. So. No, 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 no. I thought he would have been next. So I'm just double checking. Go okay. ahead, Council Member Stambler. Sorry, Council Member Bowling. Um, two particular areas I want to comment on here. Um, the cap is of greatest interest to me. And the first question as this discussion unfolded was why set the cap at 15? Um, why not 20? Why not 50? Where, where did 15 come from? In my mind, the cap covers R1, R2, and R3 areas. In other words, we're not setting a cap for each individual area. And if we aren't, then theoretically, new plexes could wind up being concentrated in the one or two areas with the greatest profit potential. And in a way, that runs counter to our intention of promoting affordable housing throughout the city. As long as we have a single cap, rather than area specific caps, I would err in the direction of a more cautious number like eight to 10, after which we would reevaluate. In the spirit of compromise, I'm willing to support an annual cap of 15. There's also the larger question, why have a cap at all? Okay, that's pretty simple for me. Uh, number one, if 2103 passes, we, or 2123 passes, we are introducing a significant change in zoning policy. Two, we are currently limited in our ability to predict how this change will actually play out in our neighborhoods. And three, we, every single one of us on this council has a significant number of constituents who we represent who are deeply concerned about the impact of, impact of plexus on their neighborhoods. And number three is the single greatest reason, I think. As I have said, each of the last 
to unite, in my view, is only compromise if it truly injects additional caution and intentionality into the introduction of plexes. And as I've shared the last two nights, I don't feel that it does. If I correctly understand an argument made earlier this evening, the fact that we've had no duplexes introduced in a particular area suggests that a cap may be unnecessary. In my mind, that argument also suggests there wouldn't really be a downside to having a cap. If we don't have any takers wanting to develop plexes, then we haven't unrealistically constrained anything. What we are charged with doing in this moment is ensuring that the introduction of more plexes with these new zoning regulations is done intentionally and thoughtfully. I've heard the statement a couple of times, you know, I would be surprised if we had 20 applications or I would be really alarmed if we had 20 or 25 or so. With this new change and given all the concern we've heard from constituents, I don't believe it's appropriate to wait and armed before introducing some guardrails. I'll be supporting amendment three. Thank you. Thank you very much, council, or council member Stambulary. Um, other comments from council members? Council member Bowen. With due respect to the many educated people who weighed in on this topic, we do have evidence. Old Northeast, which is here, this bright RM spot, and the extreme western end of Elm Heights, this tan RH spot, are literally the neighborhoods closest to the Old Crescent, the student building, the union, the law school. These two neighborhoods have the strongest student rental demand anywhere in town. And the gates have been open for a year Investors both inside and outside town already own the single family homes in the neighborhoods north of the union, several of which I showed on screen tonight. We have data from planning that 2020 was a normal year for development despite the pandemic. And we heard staff report that there are at least 178 single family houses in RM and RH. Not one owner took advantage of the opportunity to file for a quadplex, which is legal under those zones. These are greedy, rapacious investors, right? Isn't demand through the roof? They're out to make a profit from students. Where are the profiteers? If what Mr. Cornett is, is says is true, that the land value is everything, then Old Northeast should be quadplexes right now. This is the lowest hanging fruit, lower hanging than any other neighborhood. No one's even filed a petition to build a plex, not one. Why would an out of town investor attempt to build a duplex in Bryant Park when they could buy a house much closer on 8th Street and build a quadplex or more with any opposition. As of 2019, there were 35,000 housing units in the city. Roughly 5,000 were built after, since 2010, according to table DP04 of the American Community Survey. But rents had never been higher. We need hundreds, thousands of new units. The single family zoned neighborhoods are only willing to allow 15 a year collectively among them, 15. We are not against plexes, they say, but how quickly they have forgotten two days ago in their passionate advocacy for Amendment 1. The sponsors know that lifting the cap puts the onus on others to go through the process again. We already deregulated housing in April of 2020. We have already had a scientific experiment, and none of us even noticed when Ms. Scanlon mentioned it. All it did was underscore how challenging it is to build missing middle housing in the face of this kind of opposition. There is no data to rebut this outcome. We have a measure. I wanna thank Mr. Schneider for his kind words. His conclusion though underscores my point. Instead, my colleagues are legislating and advocates of these amendments are supporting this based almost entirely on anecdote. People are for this simply because they really believe that developers are coming, their fear is utterly irrational despite appearances, but part for the course in a college town. I urge everyone to revisit their assumptions about what is true about Bloomington. The last thing I'll say in response to Mr. Akers, why not pledge now to sell your home to another owner occupant and not hold out for top dollar? Who are the people selling for top dollar now? If your former neighbors sell to landlords, maybe they weren't your friends. And those who have spoken in favor of Amendment 1 or 3, who themselves have admitted to own- Sorry, Council Member. I'm almost done. One sentence, please. Well, one sentence, please. Please. 
those who have spoken in favor of Amendment 1 or 3 who themselves have admitted to owning rental housing in Bloomington should consider selling their rentals to owner occupants to help relieve the shortage. I yield. Thank you for the extra time. Thank you. No, you didn't yield. It was 20 seconds over, but thank you for your comments. Can you remove the screen, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have any other comments from Council Member Piedmont Smith? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm against Amendment 3 because I think it would add arbitrary and inequitable limits on duplexes in our residential neighborhoods. If the conditional use criteria are insufficient to prevent direct harm to neighbors, let's add additional criteria like Amendment 5 would do. In this whole UDO amendment process, I'm motivated by what I think is in the best long-term interests of my hometown, Bloomington. I've done research on residential zoning and think adding more housing density is the right thing to do to provide more housing, which we dearly need, and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the transportation and energy sectors. We do need to continue working on affordable housing programs, including incentives and a possible land bank on the hospital site. I have listened to my constituents. I just don't agree with most of the comments I have received. And as I said on Tuesday, there are many constituents I've not heard from. I do not assume they will agree with me. I just haven't heard from them. I was elected to represent my constituent, but I was constituents, but I was also elected because of my ideals and my goals. And my number one priority when running for office was sustainability and climate action. I believe that adding more density increases sustainability. And Amendment 3 would put arbitrary roadblocks to the mildest form of higher density, the duplex. We will still have the six-month report from staff, as that is part of Ordinance 2123 itself. I'm going to vote no on this amendment. Thank you, Council Member Piedmont Smith. Okay, I'm flipping through the screen. Uh, Council Member Sandberg is the author, or uh, were you planning to go last? Oh, I will go ahead. And um, as the co-sponsor of this, I will obviously be voting yes. I do want to spend a few minutes, though, to just say how grateful I am to all of the public who came out tonight, have, who have been coming out these past nights, who are staying engaged. Um, I know this is hard. Public service is hard. And um, when all of you take the time to be here with us, um, making difficult decisions, it really does fill me with a, a sense of pride. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just great. I'm just grateful to hear from so many of you. Not everybody chooses their words the most carefully. I know there's been a lot of criticism about the semantics and words and, um, but what I hear are, people's heartfelt feelings, whether you're for this or against this, this is your right to come in here and express how you feel. Whether you're a great spokesperson or whether you're clumsy with your words or whether you misspeak, it does not matter to me. I'm grateful to be a public servant here in Bloomington and I thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Council Member Sandberg. Um, I will take a few minutes. Um, I also want to thank the sponsors this evening. This was a very tough decision. Um, however, I think once you are able to have conversation and work through some things, um, uh, then I think you tend to get more to toward middle ground. Um, I've heard the term compromise, and I think that's you know can be used with, with in this context. The reality of the matter is is that if you made a compromise yesterday, that was probably the folks who supported by right since Amendment 1 failed. So in one case, you got a choice. The other case, you don't really have a choice depending on your position. So as opposed to using those words, I seek middle ground. I thought yesterday was exactly where we needed to be. Now, the fringes of that or how it spreads out was the fears of some of our community members that have been expressed. 
um, some of the passions on either side. I've heard experts, as many of you have, on both sides of this issue, um, the fears of, of, of overdevelopment, of, of outside developers. I think we, the bottom line is this, this is to increase housing inventory, and it is one of the tools that we're gonna use to get there. I think many folks have, have talked about affordable housing. This is really not about that. We've got other tools for that, and we've done other projects. This is about increasing housing inventory. So hopefully at some point, as we work through this, maybe we could put downward pressure on the, the prices of the market. So um, I, I know we only have three minutes as we've told ourselves, um, and I have much more uh, 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 that I could talk about. Um, and I'm sure you all too. Again, I really want to thank um, our public um, for their comments. I'll even thank the folks who has promised that I will never ever win another elected office. Those that have said that I wish to rip the heads off of our community and uh, do something, other words that I won't use at this time that some of my co colleagues have um, received as well. And I see I've got to sign, so council member will, Sims will shut up. And since we've, do we have any other final comments um, or another bite at the apple? Seeing none. Mr. Sims, Mr. Robert, we, raise your hand. Okay. Can, I, can I just can I just, just express my uh, thanks to uh, uh, well, Miss Lacey Council, and Oops, so sorry. That's okay, Councilmember. Councilmember Rollo. Yeah, just just two things of note. I I, I of course respect uh, is uh, Councilmember uh, Piedmont Smith's uh, concern about climate change, yes. but I would say that. The density question is far from settled. If you have some, if students occupy those homes, those plexes in core neighborhoods and are drawn from high density to highest density, which are, which are the, the high rise student buildings. And this ends up promoting families to, to flee to the burbs, you've lower density overall. So it's a complicated picture. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it might not lead to more density, but it might not. And then, and then the other thing I wanna say is that I think the areas that Councilmember Volan referred to are already extremely dense with uh, five person rentals in them that are grandfathered. So I don't think that those are, are necessarily comparing uh, apples to apples. Thank you very much, um, Councilmember Smith. Oh, I just wanted it. I was just going to end the comments on that. I I want to thank you, President Sims, for your uh, helping us through this this evening, and especially a big shout out to Miss Lacey for going through that and mo and moderating and reading all those comments because I'm sure she's worn out from doing it. So thank you. Thank you. I'm sure she'll be glad when. Uh, Mr. Lucas gets back from vacation because <laughs> she's worked overtime and we truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, seeing any or no further, Council Member Holden. Yes, sir. Yes, Just I'm, response I'm sorry. To, thank you. Thank you. Mr. In response, Council Member Rallo, uh, people seem to keep forgetting that density is the avenue on college, formerly known as Smallwood, the large apartment buildings that the good people of Bloomington objected to, uh, the good non-student people of Bloomington objected to when they were built, that's density. Uh, everyone, every time I hear the somebody say a neighbor that's already dense, compared to what? Yes, they're dense compared to Hyde Park or uh, some other neighborhood out of the periphery, but density is relative. Uh, finally, I just want to put in a plea, not even a plea, just uh, the lonely lament of the District 6 representative who represents 14,000 people. The vast majority of them are students. They're people and they're here. The census counts them in the city of Bloomington. They're 18, they have the right to vote. The 26th Amendment's 50th anniversary is July 1st. It's not my fault. I didn't draw the district lines. I urge everyone to take a look at the outline of District 6 and see how carefully it was drawn, how it split up East Side and Elm Heights to put the student rentals outside of the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, I didn't draw those lines when I took office in 2004. 
uh, and I lived in that area and I still live in this area. This is the area I represent. I'll leave it at that. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Are we ready for the question? Seeing no more council comments, um, we are prepared to vote for amendment three on ordinance 21-23, amendment three. Will the clerk please call the roll? Sorry, I didn't have my mic down. Councilmember Rallo? Yes. Bolin? No. Harrison Barger? Yes. Scambalori? Yes. Sims? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Dean Mount Smith? No. Smith? Yes. And Ann Burke? Yes. Thank you. And Amendment 3 is adopted 7 to 2. Um, Mr. Parliamentarian, um, it's fairly obvious that we are not going to get through our business tonight. Um, I want to remind our, count, our my council colleagues that as it stands now, we have two more um, amendments to, um, to deal with um, and another ordinance before we're done. Um, but it's pretty clear that it's getting close to the 11 o'clock hour um, when it's recess time, uh, unless there's someone here that wishes to make a motion that can be passed by two thirds vote that we continue. I don't see any of those indications. So um, after I make this statement, then I will entertain a motion for recess or actually I will call a recess as we did last night. Thank you, Parliamentarian Flaherty. Um, but after we do the recess, and since we have more work to do, um, I will call a special session for next Wednesday, May the 12th, beginning at 6.30. Um, that was normally a committee night and we've made space for that. So special session next Wednesday, 5, 12, 6.30 p.m. And I'm also calling for Thursday, a special session on Thursday, 5.13, 6.30 p.m. if needed. Um, I have faith in my colleagues and I believe that we've met a lot and hopefully with one more meeting, we'll be able to get through with our business on um, these plexus issues. So um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'm sorry, no recess, recess. No recess. Second. second. All right, it's been properly moved and second. I don't think- we Actually, need to I think we do need a roll call vote now, don't we? Um, I'm trying, to remember. Didn't I'm trying to remember what we did last I, night. I'm so, just, so sorry. Consent. Yeah, if, I think unanimous consent could still apply here. The first evening when we recessed, I did recommend that we take a roll call vote and change uh, my, my opinion uh, by the second meeting. Uh, so unless Ms. <laughs> Lacey feels otherwise, um, I don't see why unanimous consent couldn't apply here if there's no objections to recessing at this time. Okay, do we have any objections? Seeing none, uh, we will reconvene Wednesday, May the 12th, 6.30 p.m. Thank you all for your patience and your diligence and your um, concern for this community. <laughs>